Hello everyone and welcome back. I generally make videos for students in this channel, while today I'm going to make a video for young faculty and for senior students and postdoc who are planning to submit an NSF career proposal in the near future. As most of you already know, the NSF career is a foundation-wide activity that spans all across NSF directorates and is meant to provide funding in order to support early career faculty which have the potential to serve as academic role models, both in research and education, and also will have the opportunity to lead and advance the mission of their department and organization. There are a few main differences of career proposals with respect to regular NSF proposals. And these are that first, only untenured faculty can submit a career proposal. The second one is that this is a five-year proposal versus a three-year proposal of most NSF submissions. And furthermore, you only have three attempts in order to submit your career proposal and get it funded, after which you are not eligible anymore. I had the honor of receiving the NSF Career Award in 2020, and since then, I had a chance of participating in several NSF career panels. I've also served as panelist in several NSF career workshops, and I also had the opportunity to gather several feedback and useful inputs from program officers at NSF, as well as from senior colleagues on how to write a successful career proposal. So in this video, I want to summarize these tips, and I hope you will find them useful in order to write your future career proposals. Before we start, as usual, I would really appreciate if you take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel and potentially even share this content in order to allow this channel to reach a wider audience. And also, please let me know in the comment below if you find these tips useful. Thank you very much, and let's start. The first suggestion is to not submit a career proposal as your first proposal. Proposals in general are complex to write. There are several sections which have certain content that is expected and sent their contribution that is expected, such as, for example, the intellectual merit, the broader impact, etc. And if you're not familiar on how to write this content in order to meet these expectations, you're basically going to waste one of the few attempts that you have in submitting your career. So it's much better if you familiarize with the writing process, writing a general NSF proposal, that if it gets rejected, you always have as many chances as you want to resubmit it after you improve it, rather than wasting an attempt of submitting your career proposal. I also would like to add an additional suggestion, which is to write a career proposal only after you get an NSF proposal funded, because this will allow you to not only have submitted one of few proposals, but also go through the entire process and finally reach the level of the right expectations that will allow you to write a more proper career proposal. The second suggestion is to familiarize with the specific program where you want to submit your career proposal. Each program is different. Each program has its own specific expectations. And so it is very important that you know what these expectations are before just trying to write a career proposal and then clearly missing some expectations that everyone that is familiar with that program already knows are there. So one way of doing this is to contact the program officer and ask to serve on panels because as you serve on panels you're going to get more experience reviewing proposals you're going to hear comments from other reviewers on what is expected of a certain proposals and also comments from the program officers and this will help you build a more clear understanding of what is expected from a proposal in general but also from that program in particular the next suggestion is to talk to the program officer before you submit your career proposal. The way of doing this is to prepare the summary of your proposal, share it with the program officer and ask for a meeting. I'm very confident that this meeting is gonna be extremely useful for the writing of your proposal. Next, you need to make sure to have your proposal reviewed by several colleagues and get their feedback before you submit. In order to do this, you need to finish the writing significantly ahead of time to allow these colleagues to actually review the proposal and provide you feedback. This is extremely important. It will allow you to improve the proposal significantly. So for example, in my case, I had about seven people reviewing the proposal and the final proposal was very different from the first one that I had prepared before they reviewed it. In the next tip, I want to highlight that a career proposal is different from a regular proposal specifically in the fact that education has a major role with respect to a regular career proposal. 
So proposing some sort of standard boilerplate in which you have one PhD student trained and one new course that you propose in your program is not going to be enough as an education contribution of a career proposal. My suggestion here is to try to link every research activity or most research activities that you propose to some educational components and potentially even have some educational component feedback with their output in the research activities that you are doing. The next suggestion is to read previously awarded career proposals. So what you can do is to go on the NSF award search and you can look for some previously awarded NSF proposals and there you can find the abstract. But you can also contact either colleagues that you know that have been awarded the career proposal or even your research organization at your university that sometimes have drafts of the previously awarded career proposals that they can share with you. This will really help you have an idea of what is the type of contribution in terms of research and education that is developed in a successful career proposal. My last suggestion when you're writing your career proposal is to think at a five year long career plan that encompasses both research and education. So look at your proposal and think, how is this different with respect to a regular three year proposal? So obviously here experience helps. And that's why I suggest you to submit and get awarded a regular NSF proposal before you write your career. So this is the end of this video. I really hope that you found it useful. Please remember to like and subscribe and let me know in the comment below if the video was helpful. Thank you very much and good luck submitting your career proposal.